that one second. Hi, Jerry.
to start choir peoples special treat downstairs. So let us prepare. Come to your seats, please. And let's um, go quickly through our announcements. Looking ahead this week, if you want to help pack our bags for food share, it's at 1.30 on the 12th. 1.30 on the 12th is where we are packing food share bags. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so, um, uh, Tuesday evening, 6.30, is our church council meeting, and um, 11.30 on the 14th is where we're giving out the Easter food share bags, okay? So please come and help on the 12th at 1.30, and help at 11.30 on the 14th to pass out food share bags. Um, resuming, not next week, but the week after Holy Week, after Easter, is uh, Thursday Beloved Apprentice. We will not, she will not have Beloved Apprentice this coming Thursday because we have um, our Holy Thursday services. Right after service, pancakes and good stuff. The men, the band of brothers, the men of Christ Lutheran Church have been downstairs slaving over a hot stove for you this morning. And so please, once you're done, once we're done this morning, we're going to say the table grace or sing the table grace before we go down so you can just dive in when you get there. You don't have to wait. Okay? And, um, Let's see. Um, the seventh watch, Monday through Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Gosh, I can't see that. It's too small. Um, yes, at 12 o'clock, April 11th through 13th, we're going to have prayer and praise and Saturday noon prayer vigil on uh, Holy Saturday on the 16th. Those are at noon. Both. Uh, okay. And, okay, here's a, this is important here. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So the Upper Room Supper, if you have not called in your reservation, because we're going to put placards with your names on the tables, if you have not called in your reservation for the Upper Room Supper, supper please see Sue after service or downstairs while you're having your pancakes and stuff. All right? If you haven't signed up yet, please see Sue, because the deadline was the 7th. All right? So, um... Please see Sue to, if you want to make a reservation you haven't already. Okay, so uh, is that all the announcements so far? I think. Ten of so. What? Ten. Ten of Oh, there they are. Okay. Okay, so we have the Good Friday Ten of service at 6 30, Liturgy of the Shadows. And of course, Resurrection Sunday, our celebration that Jesus Christ has risen again from the dead. Hallelujah. All right. And our Mercy Me concert is the 21st. Um, you can buy tickets. You see the uh, website there. Um, it is um, www.life97.com. Uh, event, Mercy Me in concert. You can get your tickets there. And uh, so that's that. April Mission of the Month, Changing Lives in Northland Through Food, Shelter, and Hope, is the Union Gospel Mission. Okay. Welcome to worship this morning.
bless the Lord this morning. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray this morning. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask that you prepare your hearts to confess your sins unto the Lord, and we confess them corporately as a church, that we repent and confess of our sins unto God at this moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow along in your bulletins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore declare to you and forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand with us as you are able, and sing all glory, laud, and honor this morning. Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet, Hosanna's ring.
glory and honor this morning. Hallelujah, we praise you this morning. Please be seated. And now, the service of the word. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. <clears throat> Here from uh, God's Word. The Old Testament reading, Deuteronomy 32, verses 36 through 39. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining, bond or free. Then he will say, Where are the gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God besides me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Our graduates from Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up the horns of the altar, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. Now we're going to hear from the choir.
Well, thank you, choir. We had fun. Yes. <laughs> and there's room for more. <laughs> we'll take more. No age limit. Um, the New Testament reading, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. <clears throat> Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, through, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeliness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed him on, the, on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 Please stand with me as you're able as we ask God to open the eyes of our hearts to hear the gospel lesson this morning. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm tree and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been, has been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and was raised and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to the Lord Christ. Amen. Please be seated. The message theme this morning is, is that <laughs> God takes vengeance on our enemies by taking the blows that were coming our way. And the message goal is that you would come to realize how often you sinfully rely on other gods, yet in repentance trust that God delivers you for the sake of Christ's suffering in your place. It's a rock. What's a rock? When you look at a rock, what do you see? 
They're different rocks. You see a rock. That was funny. <laughs> Somebody said, I see a rock. <laughs> well, you've heard of the Rock of Gibraltar, right? There's a couple more slides that are going to come up. You hit the buttons. You've heard of the Rock of Gibraltar, right? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever been to that part of Lord, part of Europe to see that? I haven't. <laughs> but the Rock of Gibraltar is a monolithic limestone point of high land located in the British territory of Gibraltar, near the southwestern tip of Europe on the Iberian Peninsula. It's 1,398 feet high. Most of the rock's upper area is covered by a nature reserve, which is a home to around uh, 300 Barbary macaques, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. In other words, they're wild monkeys. And these macaques, as, as well as a labyrinth of tunnels all through that mountain, uh, attract many tourists every year. Even companies name themselves after the Rock of Gibraltar. Like the Gibraltar Drum Company. You know, they, they make hardware. Those silver things that are holding the cymbals and stuff like that and the snare drums are from the Gibraltar Drum Hardware Company. And they have the idea that their hardware is as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. And for the most part, it is. Or like the Prudential Insurance Company, long time ago, used the phrase, Prudential has the strength of Gibraltar and used to have the Rock of Gibraltar on their logo, you know, with Prudential in front of it. <clears throat> so rock can mean strength, solidity, protection, faithfulness, perfection, justice, a stronghold, a refuge, and a fortress. Deuteronomy 32.4 says, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness, and without injustice, righteous and just is he. And the writer of Deuteronomy is not talking about Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> He's talking about God. King David said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You saved me from violence. So when we read the psalm and when we read our, um, our lesson this morning from the Old Testament, we have to say to ourselves, well, what happened to Israel? Israel, <laughs> on and off, considered God to be their rock, their salvation, their protection, their stronghold, their refuge, their fortress. But then Israel kept turning away from God to their idols, being disobedient. And God's plan was to introduce their Redeemer who would, and once and for all, take away all of their sins by making an everlasting atonement for them. But they rejected God. And they would soon reject their Messiah who came to the earth to save them. So what we have here is the psalm declaring Israel's misstep by rejecting the rock which God had provided for them. The rock is their Messiah. And he came in the flesh. He is Jesus, our Savior, their Savior. So when we read Psalm 118, in verse 22, it means that Israel despised the dawning of a new era. It's better explained by Christ Jesus in Matthew 21, verses 43 and 44. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will shatter him. The builders and chiefs and members of Israel itself. The builders are the chiefs and the members of Israel itself, not pagan unbelievers. Thus the Apostle Peter says in Acts 4.11, 
This Jesus is the stone rejected by you builders, which has become <clears throat> the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. <clears throat> so we see how this reference to Christ Jesus is brought about by the means of Isaiah 28, 16, where it says, Therefore, that is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build upon. Whoever believes need never be shaken. In the light of the, Messi uh, in the, light of the Messianic prophecy of Isaiah, here we see Psalm 118.22, and it has a mess messianic meaning, which is warranted by the fact that the history of Israel culminates in the history of Christ Jesus. Now, according to John 2, 19 through 21, which you can look at at your leisure, it is Jesus who is this, in his state of glorification, the eternal glorious temple in which dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, once and for all atoned for the sins of humanity. That's what he did. That was prophesied that he would do. And so now the joy of the church is the temple of the body of Christ, which arose after three days. And the joy is typically expressed in these words, which are prophesied for with the Lord God, in other words, by the might, which dwells with him. Is this come to pass? Wonderful it is become. It has it been carried out. It has it been carried out in our eyes, right in front of us. And this prophecy reached its fulfillment in Christ Jesus right before the eyes of the people of Israel. The chief cornerstone illustrates that, that an unwanted stone which has now been placed in a position of importance. So the chief cornerstone illustrates that an unwanted stone has now been placed in a position of importance. The Hebrew phrase used here, Rosh Pinha, refers to a cornerstone located at the bottom of a structure, or even a capstone, which is located at the top of the structure. But we're talking about a foundation stone a cornerstone which is laid, just like one is laid here in this church. It is a foundational stone. So the Jews of the second temple, <clears throat> the second temple period, 516 B.C. to A.D. 70, primarily associated Psalm 118 with the Davidic king and the messianic hope surrounding him. However, Psalm 118 is not the only source for the messianic rock metaphor that we hear spoken in God's word. As we've seen above, Isaiah 28, 16 portrays the Messiah being a stone that causes one to stumble or a rock that gives offense. This messianic interpretation of the cornerstone in Psalm 118, 22 has its roots in the use of Psalm 118 or 1 Psalm 113 through 118 as a part of the Hallel Psalms used in the annual Jewish Passover celebration. However, some Jews today have rewritten the psalm. Be warned. They say, we were the cornerstone scorned by the builders, or the, we were the stone scorned by the builders, but we became the cornerstone of this world. This quote comes from a modern Haggadah, which means telling in Hebrew. Traditionally, it is used to instruct Jews on how to prepare for and experience the Passover. It helps to understand what God did for Israel in the exodus from Egypt and their journey to the Promised Land according to the ancient Jewish tradition called the Targum. The Haggadah contains the liturgy of the Passover observance, which includes clearing out of the leavens from their home or from their, from their neighborhood even, preparing the food and the wine, eating and drinking, the prayers and praising God. Therefore, Isaiah 14 introduces the Messiah like this. He will be a sanctuary. He will be a sanctuary. But for the two houses of Israel, 
He will be a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So on Palm Sunday, Jesus rides in on a donkey and the people are waving and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, and four days later, they say, crucify, crucify. He will be a sanctuary. But for the two houses of Israel, he will be a stone to stumble over, a rock to trip over, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Who's your rock? Who is your rock? 1 Corinthians 10, 3-4 tells us, All of them ate the same spiritual food. All of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ. Who is your rock? I hope your rock is Christ today. Hosanna, number 296, actually will be on your screen here. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Let's worship the Lord this morning. And can we stand as you're able, since this is a, a special day that we should honor our, our Christ um, as we remember him coming into Jerusalem. It's also a good song to wave your palm. Lift. Yes, let's wave our palms if you have them in your hand there as we sing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> in confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed along with the church, along with the church um, throughout all the ages. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask for you to um, direct your hearts to the prayers of the church this morning. <clears throat> and I just want to <clears throat> reiterate this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> the families that lost loved ones here most recently. Um, last, last uh, let's see. Yeah, last Saturday was the last of four funerals that I had within a week's period. And um, 
these families, <clears throat> I would like to ask you to remember the family of Dean Sundstrom, um, the family of um, Eli Milicic, the family of, um, let's see, Ruth Dahl. Ruth Dahl, the family of um, Doug Doug Barry. Barry. Thank you. I forgot my list. <laughs> Um, but I ask you to remember them in prayer and remember everyone that has lost loved ones here recently. Um, my wife and I went on vacation January 16th, and to this date there's been six of our beloved uh, gone to be with the Lord. And so that's um, very hard for a congregation, and, and uh, so let us keep these families in your prayers. And now let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And please respond with hear our prayer. God Almighty Christ our Lord did not count his equality with you something to be grasped, but humbled himself. Grant us a mind like his to spurn all worldly equality and humbling ourselves to find your greater portion in the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. Fix the faith of your church fast upon his death for our salvation. Enrich the proclamation of this gospel and enliven our hearts to live out this faith until Christ comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sacrificed your Son on the cross that we all would be called your children. Increase the faith of all Christian fathers, that they would receive Jesus and his sacrifice for them, and so be enlivened to sacrificial love for their wives and children. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God and King, your Son entered into Jerusalem as the true ruler, poised to lay down his life for his people. Grant the same mind to those in authority over us, that they would discharge their duty even to the least among us, and so receive your commendation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord of hosts, your Son, Jesus, came to deliver us from sin, sickness, evil, and the devil himself. Take away the fear of all who suffer in this world, God. As they await the fullness of their salvation, fix their eyes upon their crucified Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We praise you, Father. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name that you have sent your Son, not, to, not in wrath, but in mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord as we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation. Show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna. Save now in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's now time to receive our morning offering. And we would like to sing together, We Are an Offering. Can you please stand as you're able, please? We lift up our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, lift your hands.
this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, that peace which passes all of your understanding and you're going out and you're coming in and you're lying down and you're rising up from this day forth and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That picture looks just like Marco Island. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to sing Grace, Love, and Fellowship. And right after that, we're going to sing our table blessing so we can all run downstairs and get our pancakes and all the goodies attached with that coffee. Okay? So our table blessing will be after this song Grace, Love, and Fellowship. May the grace of Christ our Savior. And the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. Forever and ever. Okay, so now we're going to see, sing, Be Present at Our Table, Lord. Turn around, choir. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Thy creatures bless and grant that we may feast in paradise. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week. But after you go downstairs and have a wonderful pancake breakfast with us that the men have slavered over, you, you cannot go home yet. <laughs> <laughs>